bring in our Angelica Peebles, who's here at Post 9 with a very special guest. Hi, Angelica. Hey, Carl. Well, like you said, we have a special guest joining us today, and that is Vosner Simon, CEO of Novartis, and he is joining us from the ASCO annual meeting. Good morning, Voss. Thank you so much for being here. I want to start with these positive leukemia drug results you're presenting today. Tell us more about those and what's next for Semblix. Hi, Angelica. Great to be here today. We're really excited about the data we announced today for Semblix in the first line setting. This is really practice changing data. We're really resetting the bar of what's possible for patients with a cancer called chronic myelogenous leukemia. We've been working on this cancer for about 25 years, and now this is a medicine that has shown superiority to the standard of care, both in terms of efficacy, but also in terms of safety. So we're really excited about the medicine. We already have filed it with the FDA, and it's in what's called the FDA Real-Time Oncology Review, which really shows how excited even the FDA is about this data. We, we see this as a potential $3 billion plus medicine, and we hope to do even better than that. Uh, and we're really excited now to launch this medicine later this year. Mm -hmm. And you said it's in this different type of review timeline. So what is the timeline on that, and when do you expect to get this new indication? Yeah, we're really excited. You may have seen earlier uh, this month we received breakthrough therapy designation from the FDA for this medicine. And alongside that, we have something called real-time real oncology review, which allows us to file the medicine with FDA uh, real-time on an ongoing basis. So we've completed now the filing just uh, this week, and we would expect approval in the coming months. It's hard to know exactly when it would be, but this is really now also a top priority for the FDA to review quickly, given its potential to really reset the standard of care for patients with this cancer. Okay, well, let's switch gears a little bit. You also have some new breast cancer data today. So tell us about those results and how you see them expanding use of Kiskali. Yeah, Kiskali is our, what we believe, best-in-class breast cancer medicine, already approved for patients with metastatic disease and also now under review for patients in the so-called adjuvant setting to prevent the recurrence of, of breast cancer. Now, right now, we, what we're presenting is additional data in patients who have a more severe form of the disease, demonstrating a very consistent response uh, with Kiskali. And it really just builds on the broad data set we have in Kiskali that has shown consistently in whichever setting we test this medicine, it really performs in an outstanding way to help women either treat their breast cancer or prevent the recurrence of the breast cancer. This is a medicine where we expect uh, significant sales potential. We've already said that in its current indication, we expect it to be over a $3 billion medicine. And then on top of that, as we expect approval later this year in the adjuvant setting, we would expect another multi-billion dollar potential for this. So Kiskali and Semblix together are what makes us have confidence in the 5% growth guidance we've given over the coming years, uh, given that these medicines are really early on in their life cycle and can really power our growth through this decade. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that everyone wants to talk about these days in terms of growth for pharmaceutical companies is, of course, the Inflation Reduction Act and some of those drug pricing provisions. And there's been a lot of talk that some of those provisions could change how cancer drugs are developed. So what changes are you making, if any, at Novartis in light of these new regulations? Yeah, we think the IRA is going to have really a negative impact on really developing new cancer medicines, particularly for the elderly. I think what you're going to see is a shift away from what we call small molecules or often medicines that are formulated as pills for the elderly. Uh, and you're going to see that shift happen very, very quickly. You'll see more focus on rare cancers, which are outside of the Inflation Reduction Act, cancers for younger people. Uh, but not, I, I think, as much for, for the elderly population. And that's really too bad. So I think this is an urgent matter we hope Congress will take up, correct the IRA, move both small molecule medicines and large molecule medicines together to 13 years of protection, and allow our industry to develop the cancer medicines that patients need. One of the big challenges in cancer medicines is we develop these medicines over time. The two examples I went to, uh, talked to already about Semblix and Kiskali, we've developed these medicines over many, many, many years. And that eats into the time we're given in the IRA with free pricing. So this is something we really have to correct if we want cancer drug development to continue at the pace that we're currently seeing here at ASCO.